All right, I'm Jessica with that hashtag show. Thank you both for sitting down to talk to me about uh, all my friends hate me, um, which I think the title truly says it all. I think we've all been there. Um, <laughs> this is a movie about basically social anxiety. Um, and some of us feel that more than others, but I think everybody's experienced it uh, at a time or two. Uh, so was this movie inspired by any specific moments of anxiety in your lives or just like a general feeling that we've all had? <laughs> Plenty of moments is the, is the, yeah, is the short, short answer. But no, we, we, there was a specific um, wedding that I went to, uh, when, uh, about, I mean, about five, five or six years ago. And it was, it was friends from uni, similar to the film. And they, I sort of slightly drifted apart from them and then was a bit surprised to get the invitation. And then I stupidly went out the night before and, and, um, and just throughout the day became increasingly paranoid that I'd been invited as a joke. And like that, um, the, the kind of groom was going to make a big um, uh, joke at the, uh, during the speeches about how it was, it was so dumb that I thought that, that I would actually genuinely have been invited. And Tom and I would talk about this and Tom pointed out to me that I was a deeply narcissistic person um, for thinking this on someone else's wedding. But it also felt like a fun setup, you know, for a kind of a, a dark comedy where, where you could just have this horror film set in someone's head. Um, and and to kind of watch watch one one guy's demise. Absolutely, and I think it's a very interesting take on the the anxiety as well because you could do an anxiety story that's just sort of strictly in a drama comedy space, but instead we lean into this paranoia and the sort of horror thriller element to it. So, what made you want to explore that angle in particular? Yeah, I mean, I guess we, yeah, we kept calling it like a social horror, um, just this idea of kind of, um, you know, playing everything high octane, like it's all headed towards some big kind of blood and cuts crescendo, but just always, I guess, pulling the rug or kind of like, you know, wrong footing the audience and basically just keeping that tension and that build up. Um, uh, throughout the film, but without ever kind of like giving any any release or, or relief to the audience, which I think is what what we sort of decided was what anxiety felt like, always waiting yeah. for that answer and someone to solve it and someone to step in, but but never quite finding the end of that of that thread. Um, so that was the starting point that we that that we had. And um, uh, and I guess, um, you know, it made for a really fun and easy first 90 percent of the film to write it all flow, came out like um really easily and all you know flowed 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 nicely but then when it came to tying everything up at the end we went through a lot of different endings and a lot of different kind of concepts of how we we're going to leave the audience feeling um and then in the end as as you know like opted for something that hopefully just kind of double downs on the on, on the um intensity and the and the and the anxiety and leaves people just feeling as uncomfortable as before. For sure. It's interesting that you say that this was mostly like very easy to write because when I was thinking about this movie, I thought, you know, anxiety is such a specific internal feeling and by definition, one that isn't super rational. And so I thought it would be more challenging to sort of turn that somebody else's individual anxieties into like an anxiety that we can all feel, but that wasn't super challenging for you. That came pretty easy. Well, I think that Andy did a great job of, of, of with a sort of cinematography of making it feel like it's all in one character's head. I think there's a lot of like shot choices that, you know, as an audience, you feel like it, it, it's sort of his, it's his perspective that you're kind of trapped in. You know, you, you, you don't, you don't ever see other characters, um, you know, talking away from Pete. So, so in that sense, it just sort of took like a technique like that may, I think helped helped give a feeling of a very personal sort of um yeah internal experience that, that absolutely and you did mention uh some alternate endings am i allowed to ask what some some alternate endings might have been well yeah i mean we, we, yeah there's a lot of them i think we realized there were <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a few narratives going on in pete's head um you know there's one where he's convinced that Maybe he did something wrong to Claire, and then as he's you know in for some trouble on that. There's one where maybe he 
feels like he's drifted apart from the friends and they're punishing him for that. Um, and then there's this other thing of this intruder that joins the party and, you know, maybe there's some secret behind what, why he's there. Um, and I would say, you know, we kept trying to commit to one of those threads and, and say, OK, so the answer is he did do something wrong to Claire. They are actually punishing him or the answer, the answer is this intruder really is someone he knew from his from his past. Um, and they just felt like, yeah, quite unsatisfying, like they were sort of... Um, uh, you know, revealing the monster or sort of, you know, li li turning the film into a kind of tacky murder mystery type thing when when we felt like we had tapped into something a little bit more substantial than that, which is just this this feeling that we all share. So then it just became, you know, clearer and clearer that the way to end it was to was to keep all those threads running in Pete's head and leave you with the sense that he's never going to find respite and he's always going to be like, tying them you know tying the threads together and um sort of living in that hellish experience there was a really weird there was a weird ending with an old man in the attic or something yeah. they went up to the attic and include that in the there. He's like, nice. you're being punished for everything and he was a sort of odd like god i don't know and then and then there was yeah and then harry was going to be claire's brother who who was sort of and that's why he was personally taking on it mm. yeah but as tom said it felt you know, anxiety, as, 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 as he said, is, is about not knowing. So in a way, if the film's going to be about that, then they, we had to try and make it make the ending fit that kind of concept of not knowing. Absolutely. And I think the one that you landed on definitely works. So <laughs> nice work. Good to know. Thank you. One of the things that I really enjoyed about the film was that you explored all these different avenues of anxiety and how your social anxiety is different with different people. So Pete, the way Pete talks to his girlfriend is different than the way he interacts with his old school friends is different than the way he acts with this intruder, this new person that's coming into the group. Um, and I thought it was really interesting to explore how that manifests differently. Were there any different relationship dynamics or sort of forms of anxiety you would have liked to explore that you didn't get to put into this film um maybe well, was, yeah parents, there had been some like parents in it i think that there were a couple of drafts where where george's dad came and is kind of is another is another sort of um way in which pete humiliates himself trying trying to sort of um you know their interactions um but it didn't feel right to sort of take the lid off the pressure cooker with a kind of an adult, for a, a, an older adult for some reason, other than Norman. And obviously the interaction with him is, is the worst because Pete's so desperately trying not to be patronizing to someone of a kind of, you know, a different class, but actually ends up being the most horrible to him. And, and like, so the way that it was really fun writing, you know, that, that, that Pete sort of overcompensating when he realizes that, yeah. <laughs> Guys heard heard him and you know saying oh thank you in that really kind of disgusting way. Um, but no, I, yeah, it would have been good to get some some sort of interge more intergenerational sort of dynamics maybe, but um, well, it didn't feel right. That's fair. And just to to wrap up, um, what do you hope that people are taking away from all my friends hate me? Um, just that sort of comfort of knowing that other people also feel this way. Do you want to, do you want to help them through any anxieties? Yeah, well, yeah, hopefully we've created, you know, the worst possible nightmare. So you don't have to have it basically like, you know, it's sort of, we've, we've present, we've presented, yeah, the worst of all worlds, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I think as, as I think, I can't remember if I said this earlier, but, you know, when, when people were reading the script, it, it did often spark conversations like, you know, that that's reminded me of this time when, when we were at that dinner, where you were actually offended by that thing. And, and, and I, I think it would be interesting to unravel some of those things that we've played out in our heads for so long. Um, but really, we just want people to just, yeah, I think, enjoy it and, and, you know, talk about and I, I love the idea of people talking about the ending and finding their own interpretation because I think that says a lot about you um and you know the, the your personal stamp on it so I think that will be hopefully interesting um but yeah uh ultimately just enjoy it and feel uncomfortable and um spread the word <laughs> that sounds good
<laughs> well, thank you both so much for sitting down to talk with me today. Um, All My Friends Hate Me is coming to a uh, theater soon, I believe. So we will get everybody to go see it and experience that anxiety for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry in advance, but also enjoy it. And yeah, thanks so much for chatting to